Name Rats, a train wreck with nine DNS vulnerabilities. Hey, Tony, I hear there are several uh, new vulnerabilities out there that are putting millions of IoT devices at risk. Uh, what can you tell us about that? Yeah, so uh, this, this came out not that long ago. Uh, definitely something that uh, everyone needs to, needs to know about um, when you're dealing with anything on, on the Internet. So uh, basically around IoT, but it's not only IoT. Um, Forescout, uh, a research group, uh, came up and stated that there are nine different vulnerabilities related to the TCP IP stack uh, uh, across some, some various systems that um, could be impacting quite a few devices that are out there that are internet facing. Uh, it's it's, it's kind of scary. So I was looking at, at some of this information and uh, with what they found, um, out of the nine, the outcome of these vulnerabilities are either remote code execution, uh, denial of service, or DNS cache poisoning. I think there's only one for DNS cache poisoning. Uh, a majority of them are definitely just RCE. What they found was, uh, looking at my notes, there's four different uh, um, systems out there where their IP stacks are, are in jeopardy with, with these vulnerabilities. Uh, FreeBSD version 12, uh, I've got IPNet, NetFX, and Nucleus Net. So uh, that doesn't mean that these are the only ones, but they did find um, with their uh, TCP IP stacks to be vulnerable. Now, um, to uh, one of the items that we had talked about with, uh, I believe it was Matt's um, conversation earlier, is uh, the CVEs for these are also not new. Uh, there's one from 2021, a bunch from 2020, and even one from 2019, or is it 16? I see 2016. 2016. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah that nines and sixes sometimes mess with me. But um, yeah, so uh, what these vulnerabilities deal with are items like um, message decompression, uh, uh, boundary errors, malform responses. There's, there's a lot. It's basically a buffet. Uh, various vulnerabilities that uh, could be used and uh, take control or take down these devices. Um, some of the uh, items that were listed in this article concern uh, servers, not just uh, IoT devices, but also items that are related to um, uh, controlling um, or industrial control. So it is wide, it's a wide range, and uh, that, that could result into literally billions of different devices out there being impacted. Um, not all of those are probably internet facing, but it is, it is something that it needs to be uh, addressed. If you have IOT devices out there, uh, you need to uh, start getting an inventory. You need to uh, perform patch management against these uh, and just, you know, monitor any of the, uh, the traffic coming to and from, from these devices. So it's, it's definitely going to be a concern. I'm sure that uh, not just this week, but in, in weeks or even months to come, um, these nine vulnerabilities will probably be in the news. Uh, they'll be, they'll be uh, a hindrance. Um, you know, hopefully we don't see uh, DDoS attacks based on botnets being created just for some of these vulnerabilities. So, uh, yeah, the, uh, the name that they're calling it is Name Rec. Uh, so it is uh, name colon rec. I think from this point on, I'm just going to call it rec. It's it's easier and probably would be less less confusing than name rec. But um, yeah, rec is out there. Nine vulnerabilities dealing with the TCP/IP stack, um, and it it's going to impact a lot of different devices out there. It's kind of funny you say rec because I guess you know one vulnerability alone is bad enough. But I'm just wondering if all nine were able to packaged into one, that would be a complete rec. I, mean, I think worse than, you know, just, you know, what it is now because, um, you know, having that many uh, vulnerabilities in one and targeting would make it a lot harder, you know, to patch. And then the, on the other other side of that, like you mentioned with patch management, you know, are most IoT devices, don't they, or don't have a good central management software, I think, to manage them. So in essence, you'd have to pretty much bring those offline. And if there are critical systems or critical devices that affect critical systems or services, uh, you'd really have to do, as you said, inventory and know what you have 
and be able to patch that, I guess, manually, since there's really not a good centralized software out there to manage all the IoT devices. The Something about the way that, that the vulnerability was named, probably that it's all in caps with a colon in the middle, um, mm-hmm. reminded me that I think these guys were also behind the Amnesia 11 release, and they seem to have a, a certain format for for these bugs, which were also IoT bugs, by the way. I think that uh, Four Scouts had this this ongoing thing where that what they'll do is they'll grab a whole bunch of bugs and they'll release it under like a a special name as like a package of bugs. Um, seem to be doing all right in that space. Yeah, and I I think I saw in the article. I, I think you're right. It was Amnesia thirty three or something. Thirty three. Yeah, and Amnesia. Yeah. What was the eleven? Wasn't there like eleven as well, something like that? I don't recall. I don't recall. Okay. But, but probably. I, no, you know, I'm confusing it with another company, so I apologize. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, uh, one of the things about this that, that frightens me, and again, going back to um, uh, Matt's, Matt's talk earlier, and uh, side note, everyone, if you haven't watched that one yet, I highly advise. But um, with using this for... Um, botnet activity or having a um, something crafted where it scans, looks, injects, and then moves on is something that with nine items, it's almost like a bouquet. You know, it's you know you got a wide variety. You can just you know uh, push it out there. It, I see this being something that could potentially be really a thorn in the side of security analysts for just any anyone that's got internet facing items and it's i'm not talking us based i'm talking global looking at what i'm seeing here from the the write up it seems like the operating systems that are affected you know if, if if for example we wanted to go back to my other story where we're talking about windows and linux um being targets for this stuff a lot of these stacks are for real time operating systems you know things that are not linux that are not windows that would require some some very custom code to be written to take advantage of what happens next. So ultimately, you know, because these are bugs in RTOSs and not in things like Linux and Windows, um, this is probably going to end up being a bug that isn't super widely used, except if you've got folks who are very technically adept, you know, folks who are, who are writing code um, for, for example, a three-letter agency or, or organized crime with resources, folks who can really dedicate someone to understanding, you know, what happens next once I've exploited a real-time operating system, what do I need to do to get my code working there? Because it's not going to be as easy as dropping in, you know, a, a pre-compiled binary for, for Linux. It's going to be, it's going to take some knowledge of what's going on in each of those RTOSs to make any use of it. Absolutely. It's, uh, but, you know, as you said, with, with three-letter agencies or organized crime or, or whomever, it's, it's not just uh, that they've got the technical know-how but with organized crime, they've got the dollars behind it. They can finance something to do it, and they're going to do it big. <laughs>